Hello everyone, welcome back in this episode of Bitcoin Trade. I'm gonna go over some chart analysis and maybe maybe some news. Um, but probably most likely uh, chart analysis here. So uh, let's have a look at this and everything's red, right? So uh, this is the um, <clears throat> the uh, Bitcoin charts. This is just the this they finally got rid of Mt. Gox. Um, good. And I see some new players in here on this list. Let's take a look. Um, of course, there's uh, let's see, focus. Okay. Okay. So there's uh, Bitstamp, uh, Bitfin, BitC. But there's Lake Bitcoin, which I've uh, I've never seen, but they're there now. Um, so, let's say they cleaned up this list, which is really nice, uh, I don't want to ever see, I'm sure there's a lot of people um, who don't want to ever see Mt. Gox, and so, um, Mt. Gox is kind of like the uh, Bernie Madoff of, of, of the money world, so Mt. Gox and, and Mark Kreppels is uh, basically Bernie Madoff in the, um, Bitcoin world, so they're gone finally. So this is oh, look at local bitcoins is turning green, but um, <clears throat> you know I, I have to make a little comment here on, on local bitcoins. Um, that is a very unique uh, market in itself. Um, it 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 really is. Um, this is a real exchange of real money and, and Bitcoin's going on here. Um, and I'm surprised that it even gets this kind of volume considering that's um, this is done in, in reality here uh, versus some of these other exchanges that are done online. So, anyways, let's take a look at some of this. And uh, you see they're b moving a little bit below their average. And so, just if you just didn't know anything about trading, and and you're you're wondering whether it's an up or down market, well, if you looked at this, um, right off the bat, it would be a you know you would say to yourself, well, it's 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 like a down market, <laughs> so, and it it pretty much is. And let me show you another uh, chart analysis here, and this is also a. Uh, Bitcoin charts, and this is a BitC five day on an hourly. I think it's, it says right there. Okay, it's five day hourly. And uh, let's just refresh it real quick. And it's just a snapshot; doesn't move. There we go. And if you look at this, you can see it's a very long, long downtrend. And so you just look at this, and in, in a recent. It, it almost looks like it broke. Um, it looks like it did try to break through, but came right back down, and then it's just been hitting up against the 25 period average, and more recent, the 10 period average, and it's just that's been the resistance. And let's just go over um, a few charts here. That's that was a bit C. Now let's do a bit stamp, and you'll see very similar, very similar indeed. So you can see it's trending down, and I've heard several things, but not not too sure why it's trending down. But but we'll just look at just chart analysis for now, and you see that these um, the two weighted average, and I got them as weighted on 10 and 25, and uh, you can see there's a clear gap here, and it almost breaks through, but can't, comes right back down, and, and there's a huge, another large gap going. And uh, you can see that the 10-day period, or uh, the 10-period average, weighted average, is being more of a resistance here. So, <clears throat> just so if, if, if there's a lot of things that are going on you can't understand, just look at the uh, moving averages, especially the weighted, and, and you'll see that um, maybe that, that'll help you make a lot of sense out of why the price is moving in a particular direction. All right, so let's go back to uh, an actual chart now. Let's do this here a little bit so you can see it. And um, so there you go. Uh, this is uh, what? Let me see. What is this? 
This is a bit stamp on a six hour period. And uh, there's my lines here. If you want a bigger view of, of my lines here, I'll, I'll back up. So, um, so there's a hard resistant line again. And that's probably why it kind of bounced out or bounce is, is, is going down because it's, it's kind of tested the hard resistance this top resistance here and as you know it's just ranging up and down up and down up and down and it's kind of ranging right around well probably right around here being the middle price somewhere around 600 650 so it's just bouncing around in there and you see the different supports and so let me zoom in get you a better idea of the support where I'm getting and so this particular support is coming from these two points right here, these two lows. I mean, kind of ignoring this because this is supported by a different, um, this low is uh, from another low, but uh, this gives you an idea of possibility of price ranges here. And so um, this, put a line between these two, and I got a line going slightly up in here, and so it did bounce and off of that, and then is coming back up but you never know because it might break through and bounce here if it breaks through this line it's you're probably looking at somewhere around here in the price range where it'll go down but uh, you know there's nothing wrong with the price going down because that just means you could buy more bitcoins and so if you were watching any of my videos um, previous episodes before um, and you made some limits your limit orders here um, you would have made a lot of money if you knew how to trade it. Um, now it's going back down because it's again hitting this hard resistance. Uh, very hard resistance this, this is. And I think it's, it's gonna, the price has to, the resistance line has to go into a, a price range that will allow the price action to move out of that trend, that resistance, that downward trending resistance line. Um, so that's that, and let's go on to uh, Bit C here, and here's Bit C. And uh, oh, by the way, if you're wondering what time it is, um, there's there it is right there. That is the time, at least on this site. So, but uh, there you go. I did uh, something similar. That's if you all wanted me to back out, go back out here, and uh, I got several things going here on on. Bit C, it doesn't quite um, fit into what we're doing here. Um, I'll just go over this again. I've shown this in my previous episodes. But uh, this is the hard line here. And you see there's a lot of room. And that's the thing about uh, Bit C. There's a lot of room here to move them down. Um, Here's another line from this point here to this point, which gives me the resistant line here. And then I made another one from this point here to this point here, which was the breakout of, of that, of this trend right here, recent trend. And then uh, I'll, this is from this point here to this point here to kind of correlates here. So there's another um, support. I don't even know what to do with this. This is a, the most unusual thing, and I talked about that before. But let's let's go back in to six hour and let's get a more recent analysis here. And so um, this line here is kind of like it's more of this in this point that I put together, but it follows through as you can see. If it's following a trend, and this is a trend going up instead of going uh, a little slightly up or even straight. Uh, so Bitsy is uh, a little unique in itself, but then again, I heard a lot of people talk about Bitsy as if it's, um, you know, uh, difficult to get their money out. But uh, apparently, uh, you can. I saw a recent article where um, you can cash out in any country, as long as as it's uh, it's denominated in U.S. dollars, to a any visa. Or Mastercard uh, credit or debit card. Um, there's a five percent charge apparently. So I haven't done anything like that yet, so I can't confirm or deny. But I've just read the reports. That's all. 
And so um, this one, as you see here, it's supporting. And uh, I've had this line for some time, so this is not anything new. Um, so there could be a possible support here for this price. And if you look at the prices here, you'll see that uh, bit C is higher. And when you usually see bit C higher than bit stamp, that's usually um, a downtrend, which it has been doing. Um, <clears throat> but that can easily change, you know. And uh, so there you go. And so, excuse me. So you see it's hitting support right here. And uh, I've put in my limit orders around these areas on all the different exchanges. And so some of them hit, some of them didn't. So I'm pretty happy, you know. When you when you uh, when you trade, you've got to learn where to put limits, or your limit orders, right? and your limit stops as well, or your limit buys and your limit sales. So, you know, if if you become good enough where you can uh, analyze a chart or understand the price action, you know, you will have your limit orders in place where you where you feel very comfortable wh with where they are and then uh, let's look at Bitfin real quick so this is Bitfin uh, so Bitfin on a six hour and uh, similar uh, there is this two lines right here that make this little support which has been dancing around and broke through and then, then there's this line and in and this line here which I made to give it this and which looks like this is also support so it danced around here and then broke down and then danced will dance around here um, again you're going into another smaller triangle here and you may get a repeat of this scenario where it bursts out and comes out bursts out but I think this is going to be the last uh, strike coming up because after that if it strikes up again I mean it's it's either going to be a small move up and then bounce down, small move up, bounce down, small move up, bounce down, or it may be actually in a price range where where the price will actually break, finally break out of this long hard uh, resistant line here. And I'll, I'll back up just to sh kind of give you all a view of it. And this one on on Bitfin shows a very um, this is the hard line, and um, it is definitely showing. Um, you know some good possible breakout opportunities here. Uh, this line here is the, this point in that top point. Um, this line, this line here that's on the bottom, the bottom part, is this point and this point, and it slightly goes down here, and so it is, it is showing a slight breakout, retreating back in, maybe for support, and you know there's on on Bitfin it's showing possible chance of really breaking out I mean a real good chance of breaking out because if you look at the price range here you can see 700 to 500 550 area that's kind of been the, the well price range has really been 400 to 700 so there's a $300 price range here that's just bouncing around um, but if, if you look at this it kind of looks like it's gonna maybe support here and then just kind of gather strength and maybe just break out or possibly even fall even further but some other good supports are right here you see these and they seem to fall right in place so this is another good support around 400 and um, you know there you go and you know I've been talking to my miner and um, uh, you know we've been talking about prices where it's going to go um, our, our miners you know going to keep supplying bitcoins to market um, they will you know at a certain certain price that they're happy with um, but at some point you gotta realize that miners really control a lot of uh, bitcoins that can be brought to market and you know if it goes too low they'll they won't of course they they want more so they may they may stop you know putting bitcoins to market or they may um, restrict the flow of bitcoins to market until um, the price goes back up 
which means basically they're 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 creating demand. So at some point, you know, if the price goes down so far, it's going to be harder to get bitcoins, and uh, the price is going to be, um, you know, how can I say this? There's going to be more demand on Bitcoin if they restrict the flow of Bitcoins uh, or pull back on uh, Bitcoin availability and you know that's probably gonna drive the price up so I, you know the, the, the price that you're seeing here median price I mean it seems like you know at some point if, if the price does drop lower than probably this right here um, it probably won't drop any lower than that because I, I think that um, miners are gonna pull back and say well you know we know we got a lot a lot of bitcoins here but at the same time we want to get the most value for the bitcoins so they may just pull back on uh, what they're putting out into the market so that's just a little heads up for anybody um, you know I'm giving you some good info on the back end of what's going on with the, with uh, with Bitcoin and maybe that that'll help you in your trade because if you see it come down here in this in this price range area and I'll show you in all the charts here uh, let's go over one more um, coinbase here let's go to a six hour and I'll go to a day and you'll see that it's there's not a lot of uh, a graph to do or work with so I gotta work with just what what I have but it seems to work so let's go into six hour and you'll see very similar and uh, you know these are the two points I used and it, it, it's fallen and hit it's gone and I use this point and the top point of whatever and uh, you'll see that it just kind of just skirted that resistance and just is going down now it seems like it, there's a good support here um, and a good support here as well so um, in my opinion like this area is a great opportunity to buy and anything between here and up here and down between this area is a great opportunity to buy because the miners will not put out to market bitcoins if it falls uh, probably below this price I mean they'll, they'll probably they're, they're watching it too just like uh, just like I am um, and uh, you know for them this is kind of like for, for the big mining um, companies out there or big big time miners who who get like you know a hundred coins uh, generate a hundred coins uh, a week or a day or something like that whatever uh, basically they generate a lot of a lot of big coins right? um, you know they're they're watching the prices too and uh, you know they they like the prices to be higher because that way their Bitcoin can last a lot longer. So they're just selling off fractional portions of the Bitcoin for you know a lot of money uh, versus selling whole Bitcoins for the same amount. So at some point, you know, I I think from what I'm hearing on on the miner side, um, you know they're gonna they're gonna restrict the flow, creating a demand and there's nothing wrong with that because ultimately um, you know they're the ones that have it they're the one that are putting the bitcoins out to the market so um, the miners actually dictate to some degree the price action um, so they have some control over that some some way of creating uh, demand uh, of course when the price goes high they're they're putting a lot of you know bitcoins to the market and to some degree they're driving the price down but you know it's it's all a good balance here anyways um, my my personal opinions on it is that it's great uh, for me um, you know I'm looking for um, I'm, I always look for uh, my value in, in Bitcoin and so uh, when the price goes down I'm buying if the price goes down even further I'm buying but you got to remember, I'm also selling and buying. I'm out, I'm trading as well. So when this comes, when the price goes down, I'm trading on the fluctuations in price. I'm trading on the different exchanges. I'm trading in real life. So I got a lot of trades going on. 
that kind of help uh, mitigate my my risk. And uh, you know, I recommend that everyone do something similar as well. So, so you're seeing the same thing here. Um, and and there's probably a good buying opportunity here. And then anywhere down here is great buying opportunity. Because if, if you're able to buy at any of these price ranges, and keep in mind the miners are looking at this too, and they, if they see it go down um, low to this point, they may say, well, you know, there's no point in giving out my Bitcoin now. Um, I'll just pull back and let's see what happens. You know, I'll just sit, sit tight and a little bit on my Bitcoins. Basically, they're going to hoard their Bitcoins. Because you know, they're, um, if you look at the history, let's just go to Bitstamp real quick and let's go on a daily. If you look at the history um, of the price action, I mean, once it's gone up this high, uh, there's just, you know, a lot of a lot of the things that go on in in in, in trading is you know human psychology, and you got to think, you know, what's going through a miner's mind. Um, when they see these price action and they're looking at it and going wow you know Bitcoin was a thousand dollars I could have sold one Bitcoin for a thousand now for me to get a thousand dollars I gotta sell what um, two two Bitcoins and so they're probably you know it kind of makes a difference if, if you have like you know five Bitcoins um, probably not a big deal but if you can imagine if you had like a thousand bitcoins and you're just hoarding, you've just been sitting on it, and you've been a miner for a very long time, and um, or even if you're a, a very large, uh, if you have a large mining rig, um, if you can just imagine all the bitcoins that uh, a miner would would have, right? And they're and they've been sitting on it for a while. Um, if if they've been around and doing this for quite a bit of time. I guess the price really doesn't matter, but at the same time, human psychology comes into play, and you know they realize the price has gone up to this high, and there's a good chance that the price will go up that high again. So they may just hoard it and just wait, because that's kind of what's been driving a lot of this price action up. Was you know everyone's um, I won't say they're hoarding it, but but at the same time, you know, um, they 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 have it. They may not have a, a way to uh, realize their gains until recent, when it becomes when it when it's become very valuable. So, you know, human psychology is basically, wow, the price goes that high. I'm just gonna wait until it goes back up that high again, and they will not put out to market their bitcoins. And uh, you're gonna probably see a lot of demand peak up again. And so I'm just giving you um, the perspective on the back end of, of you know, the miner's perspective. Not really a trader's perspective, but that, you know, that comes into play when you, when you trade uh, Bitcoin. So anyways, um, do I have any relevant news? Let me see here. Okay, there it is. Okay. Well, there's some re relevant news that came up. Looks like Mount Gox. Um, didn't realize they had a few million dollars just laying around hidden in their wallets you know they just interesting I read several reports on this and uh, who knows you know at this point um, it's just uh, I'm just watching it because it's fascinating and I, I, I am I do have some stake in it because I, I was a Mt. Gox account holder so um, just just that at this point, there's nothing I can do other than just watch and see, wait and see for me. Uh, there's other people who are already, uh, the, the government, the U.S. government, the Japanese government, the Canadian government, the European governments. I mean, there's a lot of governments just getting involved. And, um, you know, there's a lot of legal action going on here for me to keep up with. Uh, so at this point, I'm just, I'm just going to wait and see. I'm just, that's all I can do. But if there's anything that's going to come out, um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So, so Mount Gox here, they're still in the news. But and uh, of course, this is the bit beat. And of course, here's some rumors that were going on that China was going to ban. I don't know if that that would be a big cause because you know we. I think everyone knows that some of the you know China 
and Russia are kind of been a little hostile and all the countries around that area have been hostile to Bitcoin so this isn't any surprise um, but it's good to see a bit beat with um, and here's the from the Wall Street Journal the money beat but they got a little subcategory of bit beat and uh, let me see if there's an author here there's the author okay and a uh, very interesting article some rumors that China would ban um, bitcoins, but apparently not so. So this is a reason maybe uh, prices have been moving around on the downside. And then here's some other news, which is not really recent, but uh, a lot of things going on here. Um, this recent news is about, in particular, um, Uh, an SEC, SEC request to basically get some information from an exchange that's not in America and dispute of if, if, if the SEC have any authority to do this. So this is a very interesting article as well. Um, you know, you're seeing a lot of things going on here that affects what's going on in the market. So, and then what other news? Let's see what I always like to go to CoinDesk for news. So we'll see what's happening. And that, you know, CoinDesk seems to have a lot of more relevant news as a Bitcoin trader for me than than some of the other agencies, news agency. But a lot of things going on. So you know, this is one way to keep up. A lot of things going on here, um, man. You know, you can't you can't make up some of this stuff. So, oh, by the way, Colombia has looks like they they may ban Bitcoin, and that'd be an obvious reason why. And so, there's a lot of things going on. And this is what I was talking about. BitC enables fund withdrawals using Mastercard and Visa cards. Um, again, I haven't done any of that, but but a lot of a lot of people, a lot of traders, tell me that. Um, it's hard to get money out of Bitsy, but it's, but for me, it's just another trading platform. Um, if you're if you're long into Bitcoin, you, you're you're basically trading um, Bitcoin, so you're not really trying to per se cash out. If you do cash out, you um, you would do that in reality, not not through the exchanges, in my opinion. A lot of things going on, so. Anyways, that, that concludes my episode here. Um, just wanted to give you a little roundup on that. Oh. Okay, here you go. And uh, so there, there's the price action. And um, so oh, let me just conclude it on this here. So if you just look at this chart, a quick snapshot, um, what does it tell you? Well, it, it, it just tells me that the price started here and now it's down here so to keep it simple the price is going down so until the price starts down here somewhere and ends here the price is going up so right now the it's on a downtrend kind of kind of simple right if you, if you keep it simple anyway anyways feel free to uh, comment like dislike or even leave a do a video response until next time stay tuned